This video discusses digital encoding format. Data encoding. Let's take a look at these illustrations to get an idea how data encoding works. In the upper part, we have the encoding onto a digital signal. First, let's start with the original message signal, G of T, also known as the baseband or modulating signal. It passes through an encoder, which basically samples the original waveform at various points. The encoder will then transform it into a digital signal, X of T. The waveform on the right shows how a digital signal from an encoder looks like with its amplitude plotted against time. As you can see, it only has two amplitude levels. These are appropriately called the high and low levels. To extract the original baseband signal from this digital signal, the digital signal mass must pass through a decoder. The decoder is a collection of electronic components whose output will be the original baseband signal, G of T. Next, we have the modulation onto an analog signal. Similarly, we'll start with the baseband signal. This time, it's labeled M of T. It will pass through a modulator. The modulator modulates a carrier signal of fixed amplitude and frequency with respect to M of T. The result is an analog modulated carrier signal, S of T. The illustration on the right shows how such a signal from a modulator looks like with its amplitude plotted against different frequencies. As you may have noticed, much of the power is concentrated in the carrier frequency. To extract the original baseband signal from this modulated signal, the modulated signal must pass through a demodulator. The demodulator is a collection of electronic components whose output will be the original baseband signal, M of T. Digital Carrier Line Encoding Digital carrier line encoding involves converting standard logic levels to a form more suitable to telephone line transmission. Factors to be considered when selecting a line encoding format includes 1. Transmission voltages and DC component 2. Duty cycle 3. Bandwidth considerations 4. Clock and framing bit recovery 5. Error detection 6. Ease of detection and decoding Transmission voltages and DC component Transmission voltages, or levels, can be categorized as being unipolar or bipolar. Unipolar transmission of binary data involves the transmission of only a single non-zero voltage level. In bipolar transmission, two non-zero voltages are involved during transmission. It is more efficient to encode binary data with voltages that are equal in magnitude but opposite in polarity and symmetrically balanced about zero volts. Duty cycle. The duty cycle of a binary pulse can be used to categorize the type of transmission. If the binary pulse is maintained for the entire bit time, this is called non-return to zero or NRZ. If the active time of the binary pulse is less than 100% of the bit time, this is called return to zero or RZ. Unipolar and bipolar transmission voltages can be combined with either NRZ or RZ in several ways to achieve a particular line encoding scheme. These are the line encoding formats. On the leftmost side, we have the voltage levels. Positive V stands for some finite voltage level. Likewise, negative V stands for some finite negative voltage level that should be equal to the magnitude of positive V. On the topmost part states the bit value, which can only be one or zero. As you can see, there are exactly eight consecutive bits in this example. Let's take a look at the unipolar non-return to zero or UPNRZ. This is the most basic line encoding format. As you can see, the waveform is high when the bit is one and low when the bit is zero. The high level is set to positive V, and the low level is set to zero. Next, we have the bipolar non-return to zero, or BPNRZ. Similar with the UPNRZ, the waveform is high when the bit is 1, and low when the bit is 0. The difference is that the high level is set to positive V, and the low level is set to negative V. 
Unipolar return to zero, or UPRZ, follows the logic behind UPNRZ. The difference is that at the middle of a bit, the amplitude must fall to zero volts. Similarly, bipolar return to zero, or BPRZ, follows the logic behind BPNRZ. The difference this time is that at the middle of a bit, the amplitude must also fall to zero volts. Lastly, we have the bipolar return to zero, alternate mark inversion, or BPRZ AMI. This one is quite complicated as compared with the others. Let's start by pointing out that it's bipolar, so its high and low levels are positive V and negative V, respectively. It's also returned to zero, so it has a transition at the middle of a bit. Lastly, for bit zero, voltage level is also zero. And for bit one, it alternates between positive V and negative V. In this example, during the first bit one, the voltage level is positive V. The next bit one, the voltage level is negative V, and so on. Clock and framing bit recovery. To recover and maintain clock and framing bit synchronization from the received signal, there must be sufficient transition in the data waveform. UPNRZ and BPNRZ, long strings of ones or zeros, generates a data signal void of transitions and therefore is inadequate for clock recovery. BPRZ, a transition occurs in each bit position regardless of whether the bit is 1 or a 0. Thus, it is the best encoding scheme. Error detection. In BPRZ-AMI, an error in any bit will cause a bipolar violation. BPV are the reception of two or more consecutive logic ones with the same polarity. BPRZ-AMI has a built-in error detection mechanism. T carriers used BPRZ AMI with positive 3 volts and negative 3 volts representing 1 and 0 volts representing a logic 0. Types of signaling Unipolar signaling Binary 1 is represented by a high level and binary 0 by a 0 level. Polar signaling Binary 1s and zeros are represented by equal positive and negative levels. Bipolar signaling. Binary 1s are represented by alternately positive or negative values. The binary 0 is represented by a zero level. Manchester signaling. Each binary 1 is represented by a positive half bit period pulse followed by a negative half-bit period pulse. Similarly, a binary zero is represented by a negative half-bit period pulse, followed by a positive half-bit period pulse. Digital encoding format. Non-return to zero or NRZ, we have three types. First, non-return to zero dash level, or NRZ dash L, where L denotes Positive logical level assignment. So for binary 1, the digital data would have a high level, and for binary 0, the digital data would have a low level. The second type is non return to 0 dash mark or NRZ dash M, where M denotes inversion on mark. When bit is 1, a transition at the beginning of an interval will occur. When bit is 0, there will be no transition. Non-return to 0 dash space. This is the last type. S denotes inversion and space using negative logic. When bit is 1, there will be no change in the digital signal. When bit is 0, however, a transition at the beginning of the interval will occur. Return to zero, or RZ. For bit one, transition from high to low in the middle of interval will occur. For bit zero, the opposite will happen. So a transition from negative V to zero will occur. Biphase. 
by phase level or Manchester. For bit 1, transition from high to low in the middle of interval will occur. For bit 0, transition from low to high in the middle of the interval will occur. By phase mark, always a transition at the beginning of the interval. For bit 1, transition in the middle of the interval. For bit 0, no transition in the middle of the interval. By phase space, always a transition at the beginning of the interval. For bit 1, no transition in the middle of the interval. And for bit 0, a transition in the middle of the interval. Differential Manchester. For bit 1, no transition in middle of the interval. And for bit 0, transition at the beginning of the interval will occur. Delay modulation or Miller. For bit 1, transition in the middle of the interval will occur. And for bit 0, no transition if followed by 1. And then transition at the end of the interval if followed by a zero. Next, bipolar dash AMI or alternate mark inversion. When bit is one, pulse in the first half of bit level, alternating polarity, pulse to pulse. So that is what we have discussed earlier for continuous levels of one, different values of V will alternate. And then when bit is zero, there will be no pulse, so the voltage level will stay at zero. These are the illustrations of different digital encoding formats. Let's describe each one. Non-return to zero level or NRZ-L. When bit is zero, it will have a high level when bit is 1 it will have a low level as you can see this is the opposite of what we have discussed earlier this type of nrz l is known as inverse logic mapping next non return to zero inverted or nrz i when bit is 0 no transition at the beginning of interval one bit time when bit is 1, a transition at the beginning of interval will occur. For bipolar dash AMI, when bit is 0, no line signal. When bit is 1, positive or negative level, alternating for successive ones. This is what we have seen earlier. Pseudo ternary. When bit is 0, positive or negative level, alternating for successive zeros. When bit is 1, there will be no line signal. And then for Manchester, when bit is 0, transition from high to low in the middle of interval will occur. When bit is 1, transition from low to high in the middle of the interval will occur. And lastly, for differential Manchester, always a transition in the middle of the interval. When bit is 0, transition at the beginning of the interval. And when bit is 1, there will be no transition at the beginning of the interval. And then let's go back to the illustrations. Hopefully you can now see the pattern in each data encoding format.